Hello, this is Katie Walker. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Digication 2.0, which at UAA we call eWolf, to create an individual ePortfolio based on a course template. So you're going to begin at the UAA or School of Education website, click Quick Links in the top right corner, and then eWolf ePortfolio. Note that there are some um, announcements and things you can read on this page. Go ahead and click Login and type in your username and password, the same one you use for Blackboard, and click Login. And when you get to your dashboard, you'll see all of your web, uh, I'm sorry, all of your ePortfolios that you have created in the past. And you can create an unlimited number of ePortfolios um, just by clicking this plus button. You can start from scratch, you can have some that you collaborate with other. Uh, students with um, and so on. But for this project you're going to be using a, a template that was created for you in one of your courses. So you're going to start by going to the very top where you have a menu across Home, Courses, ePortfolios, Subscriptions, and Help. Click Courses and scroll down and find the course that you're creating the ePortfolio for. Click on that course then in the middle of the screen you'll see a number of different tabs starting with notifications etc find the ePortfolios tab part way across click ePortfolios and you'll see that one of them says create ePortfolio from template go ahead and click that button and now you title it by going ahead and putting something unique like the name of the course maybe and then your initial and last name. The important thing is that's going to be the URL of the ePortfolio address. So basically the ePortfolio is a website um, and it needs to be unique every time. So you can't just name everything with your name because you won't be able to tell them apart and, and it won't allow you to because each one has to have a unique address. So your portfolio is private, but it is set up so that as you publish it, your instructor will be able to see it. So you don't need to do anything but type in the title, then click the blue Create button at the bottom. And it'll take just a minute to process the new ePortfolio. And then you can see that a template has been created for you. So the changes that you make are saved automatically in this version. And notice at the top that you do have edit mode and published view. So we're going to want to be working in edit mode. So the first thing is you might want to change this header so you can have a unique ePortfolio. This header is locked so you don't accidentally change things on every single page. These are all your different pages. So we have the professional action plan and that will show up in the URL at the top, whichever one you're on, and the school community study and so on. Each of these are different pages for which you will add things and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, for now, I just want to point out that you can change this by temporarily unlocking it and then there's a couple of things you can do. So you can go ahead and find this text box you can either click the edit button to the right where it says unlock header and insert your name here. You can just go ahead and uh, double click there and type in your name. And then you can take a moment if you'd like to, to format it. Header is um, bigger and you can make it bold and there's, um, you don't want to make it a bullet list. So there's also some different colors and so on. So you can uh, play around with some of that you can have text color and a highlight color and so on. So also if you click on the settings button below that there are some additional options here which you can change the, ba the background color um, from white to a different color if you would like. And so I made it gray. Okay the other thing you can do is you can go ahead and delete this picture it will always double check. Are you sure you want to delete it? Oops, I have to type it the exact way that it shows. And now I can um, add my own image. Um, there's a couple ways I can do that, but one way would just be to um, click on the settings button, come down here to image and select image. And I'm just going to upload a file, select files to upload. And I'll just go ahead and pick uh, the hydrangeas. 
and upload. And now my ePortfolio will look a little bit different, a little unique. There they are. And then I'm going to close that section. Now it's really important to, um, and I can move this uh, around. So this one I have to use the four headed arrow to move it. And I can also adjust the size of that. Oops, there we go. So it looks a little bit better because of my photo over here. Now the important thing is to relock this header because I don't want to accidentally make any other changes. And so that's what this banner is indicating. So I'm going to lock that back up again. Okay, now my ePortfolio looks a little bit more unique. So I can go to all of these sections and add um, the different documents and things that I have been asked to add. So for example, under Home, I'm going to, this is the only one that has a little caret here. That means it has a sub page. The rest of them are all just single pages. I'm going to go ahead and choose Home, Bio, and Pictures. And now I'm on the Bio and Pictures page. So when I scroll down, I can add content with either of the blue pluses. So whether it's the small one or the big one, it doesn't matter. Um, and when I want to add my bio, one way to add it would be just to type it in or to copy and paste it. And for that, I would use the text and then rich text option. So I've gone um, and copied my bio from another document, and now I'm going to paste it right in here. And notice that when I paste it in this box, I have these different options similar to what we saw earlier, different formatting options. And I can also um, add hyperlinks. So if I wanted to hyperlink the, whoops, I should change that, shouldn't I? Okay, so hyperlink this, for example. So I select it. Then what I want to do is to go ahead and go to the School of Education website and copy Controller Command C and go back over to my ePortfolio. With the words selected, all I have to do is click the chain link button and paste, check mark, and now this is a hyperlink. So if I have clicked outside this box, in order to go back and edit this, I can either double click in it or I can use this uh, button right here. And this would allow me to move it. So if I went and hit the blue circle and added another module underneath, like maybe I wanted to add some pictures, I can connect with Google Photos if I want. That's pretty handy if you use Google Photos. Or I can just upload. And if I click on, let's see, I'll choose Chrysanthemum and choose Upload so I can add uh, pictures. And so once again, this would be the Edit button. This would be Settings. This would allow me to move. So if I wanted to drag and drop to, to flip-flop one above the other, that would be the four-headed arrow. And then also I can delete things with the trash can. So those are um, some basics. Now if I wanted to add a Word or a PDF file, I'll show you how that would work. So I'm going to click on Professional Action Plan, and then below that, either one of the blue Add Content buttons. This time I'm going to look at File or Document. They're very, very similar in the end. Generally, you're probably going to choose Document and then find your PDF or your Word file. So for this example, I just chose um, a random PDF file as an example. I'm going to go ahead and hit Upload. And it'll take just a minute, since that's kind of a big file, to appear. And there it is. And so once again, I can uh, grab the border here and make it bigger. There it is. So it's a little bit easier to see. So the difference is, when I click on this, you can see that I have some different options. So this is the best way to add multi-page files. So what I did is I chose, if you remember, document, but it would work almost exactly the same if I chose file. So it has a lot of different options at the top for this type of a document. And again, if I needed to add another document, I could just scroll down here and hit the plus, and I could add a different document. So if I wanted to add a Word document, I'll demonstrate what that looks like. Very similar. And so once again, I've chosen a, kind of a random file as an example here. This is a document, a Word document. I'm going to upload that. And that will appear in just a moment below the other file. 
So once again, I can uh, make things bigger, drag them. I can drag them uh, beyond this column structure. So if I wanted to make this one wider, I could definitely do that. And again, I can scroll down and I can make it as big as I want to make the box. So these are just one below the other with, on the same page. So you would continue to go to each page and add the documents that you've been asked to add or, or paste them in, or depending on what they are. So another thing you might want to do is put a video in. So I'll just pick this as an example, add content. And then I would probably, the best way to add a video is to embed it. And I recently used YouTube URL, but just so you know, it's way down alphabetically at the bottom of this list. So when I choose YouTube URL, I can just go to YouTube, find the video that I want and copy the URL, come back and paste it, control or command V, and it'll take just a minute for it to find it. And then I can click the blue embed button at the bottom. And now you can see that it added that video. And once again, I can adjust the size of this a little bit, make sure it all fits in that window. So again, um, my changes have been saved all along. Um, if I publish changes, it'll only publish this one page, so the school community study. So in order for your instructor to see everything you've done, you need to go to the far right and choose publish pages and publish all the pages at once. Click continue, click save, and now everything will be published. You can see what it looks like by going over into published view and you can make sure that when you click on home and bio that the information you put there is there, the professional action plan document, takes a moment to load, and so on, and then the video I put here. So once again, um, if you want to work, you need to go back into edit mode. Anything can be deleted if you change your mind. It's easy to fix. Um, if you put something in the wrong place, you can just delete it, and then you can go to the right place and put it there. So um, lots of other options you can play around with if you wanted to add like a color along the outside or something like that, you could use this. Um, but those are the basics, so hopefully this will help you with your ePortfolio.